Led Zeppelin have hugely influenced the contemporary rock world, but it all stemmed from the 1960s British rhythm and blues scene. In the early 60s, there was a lot of optimism with the young people. We hadn't been involved in a war, it was just another story to us, another a film, the Red Berets or whatever. So we'd never suffered. If you had to go to work at all, then it was easy. You could go in a job and think, oh, I don't bloody like that. Quit at lunchtime and go and get another one in the afternoon. I was lucky enough, A, to be born, I think, in a, in a decade that uh, was among the most explosively creative decades of all time. And I think that largely came about because in Europe we were post-war and we'd been through the sort of dreadful, drab 50s. So my objective for a start was not to be a famous musician, but not to go out to work, you know. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, and not do a nine to five job. Seemed ideal occupation to me. Still does. But I was also lucky to become, a, become part of the great art school British art school experiment in those days where vaguely gifted children were given the chance to go and do an art career and it actually produced quite a few musicians, I think Pete Townsend, of course Eric Clapton was in the same thing I was in and uh, people of that ilk. And towards the end of the 50s you had uh, Cliff and the Shadows and lovely pretty songs you know and uh, semi-old war songs like Lay Down Your Arms and Surrender to Mine and you, you grow up thinking this is bloody awful, you know. Even as a child you, you realise this was nonsense. Middle class kids with nothing to fight for became musicians because they could. And a hungry music scene emerged from the leafy green suburbs of Surrey in England. It's really strange, I mean I, I think about um, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, and Jimmy Page, they all lived in an area about, uh, you know, within about 20 miles of each other. We thought we were sounding like the Americans, but of course we didn't, because we weren't anywhere near as good. We'd never been slaves or worked in cotton fields or any of that kind of stuff. Most of us around here had gone to grammar school or something. And then the Americans heard the music, and because most of the whites in America didn't listen to black radio stations. They'd never heard the music before, so they thought we'd invented it, and there was a big British explosion in America. Everybody wanted to become famous and avoid the factory or the office. That was, that was what you did. I mean, it, in those days, you could play music seven nights a week in Birmingham. You didn't have to have a job. There was more urgency in the Birmingham music scene. Well, in those days, the scene in Birmingham was everybody wanted to get out of Birmingham because you couldn't make it if you were a band in Birmingham. You had to move to London. It was the only way to kind of get successful in the music business was to move to London. But there were some exceptions to this rule. Black Sabbath, God bless them, who were a band from Birmingham that followed hot on the heels of Led Zeppelin that there was always some animosity from, uh, certainly from John, who used to take the mick out of, out of Black Sabbath. I don't know what he'd make of the Osbournes now and Oz's success. He would be, he's probably turning in his grave, God bless him, but uh, at Ozzy, who's obviously such a star and a wonderful personality and hasn't changed since he was like 17 or 18. He was like that then, you know. But, um, but they, John used to, kind of laugh at Black Sabbath, um, as in fact quite a lot of people in Birmingham did until they suddenly had a number one single and then we all went, blimey, where did we go wrong? The, the good thing about the Birmingham scene was when somebody got the offer of playing with somebody like a London band or somebody that was actually making it or was more successful than you were, people really didn't mind, they'd go, look, you've got to do it, mate, off you go, you know. And suddenly the groups in England started to find their own direction rather than following the American direction. The Yardbirds were an integral part of the British invasion and of course the precursor to what would become Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. 